Hey everyone, Luke here. I'm a cybersecurity recruiter and career coach with over 14 years of experience helping people break into this industry, move up and get paid what they're worth. And over the last few weeks, we've built a real solid foundation together. In the five-step cybersecurity roadmap video, I showed you the right sequence to follow. We then had the top five free cybersecurity courses. I shared the best three ways to build real skill. And in last week's video, the top entry-level cybersecurity roles and what they pay, we talked about which jobs are best to target. Well, today, we're putting it all together. This is the missing piece. We're doing a video on how to land your first cybersecurity job, even if you have no experience. And this one's a little different. It's not just a learning plan, it's a hiring plan. I'm going to give you the real world steps that recruiters like me look for every single day. So let's dive straight in. Why most beginners get stuck? Well, every week I speak to people who've done the courses, maybe they've done a certification, they, they sent out dozens of applications, and then they say, Luke, I still i am hearing nothing. So most of the time, the issue isn't necessarily your skill set, it's how you're positioning yourself. Now, from a recruiter's perspective, beginners often make three mistakes. They sound too broad. In other words, I love all of cyber. They list coursework, but they show no proof of what they can actually do. And lastly, their resumes sound like bios, not problem solving summary. Now, hiring managers aren't looking for perfection, but they're looking for potential. They're looking for curiosity. They're looking for proof that you're learning and you're applying. And that's what we'll fix today. Moving on. So step one, pick a lane and stick to it. Cybersecurity isn't one job, it's an entire ecosystem. Now, from my entry level roles video, you already know there are many paths, but here's the key. You only need one to start. Remember, down the line, you can make, you can always move internally in a business or even move to a different area of cybersecurity. But at first, you need one. So if you love detection and monitoring, then focus on becoming a SOC analyst or the blue team. If you're curious and you love problem solving, then go for pen testing. And if you're very detail orientated and process driven, then I recommend looking at GR or compliance. And if you're already in IT, that's an excellent stepping stone. Transitioning towards security support or junior analyst. So when I open your resume or your LinkedIn, I should instantly know what direction you're looking to head in. Now that clarity is what makes you stand out over other candidates. Okay, step two, create real experience without a job. So this is where most people separate themselves. You don't need a cybersecurity job to get experience. And I know that sounds strange or to get hard to get your head around, but you just need to create it and here's how. Start with a small home lab, run a few virtual machines, run Wireshark, practice capturing and analyzing traffic. If you're on the blue team path, then try Let's Defend, try Range Force or Blue Team Labs. There's some great options out there. If you're more on the red team, then jump on Try Hack Me or Hack The Box. And here's my recruiter tip. Don't just do the labs, document them, write short summaries, post your progress on LinkedIn, include screenshots or a brief what I learned section in your portfolio. When I see that on a resume, it tells me you're curious it tells me you're consistent and serious and that's what we're looking for. So that's the kind of person I can put in front of a hiring manager. Okay, step three, certifications that actually matter. Now, you may remember if you've seen that video and if not, by the way, I'll leave the videos linked in the description, but we talked about this in the five-step roadmap video. Certifications are accelerators, they're not destinations. If you're just starting out, go with the CompTIA Security Plus or the Google Cybersecurity Certificate. Once you've got the basics, specialize. So for blue team or SOC roles, go for the CYSA Plus or the GCIH or Splunk Core Certified. Once again, many options out there. If you're heading into pen testing, then aim for the EJPT or the PNPT. And maybe when you're a bit more experienced, a bit down the track, you can look at the OSCP because that's a little bit more advanced, but a fantastic certification. Now, if you're looking to go down the GRC and compliance track, you can look at the the ISO 27001. And once you're more experienced and further down the track, the CISM or the CISSP, once you've built some real hands-on experience. I just want to clarify that they're not beginner certifications, but there's something for you to aim at when you become more experienced in this field. Now, one focused certification plus a strong portfolio beats three random ones any day. Trust me when I say that. So focus on one certification at first and get some portfolio experience behind you. Document it, get it on your LinkedIn, wherever it needs to be for the recruit to see. That beats going out to get three certifications without any portfolio experience. Okay, step four, building a resume recruiters actually want to read. And this is a real big one. I can tell you this as a recruiter. So let's talk about your resume because that's your first impression. Remember, your resume is only designed to get you interviews. Once you get an interview, you can then sell yourself. You can sit in front of someone, look them in the eye and talk them through your skills, why you want the role, why you're right for the role, what skills you can bring. But before you can get there, you need a very strong resume. And there are 
two things it needs to pass the ATS system, applicant tracking system, and the human scan. And here's how to make it work for both. I want you to put a clear title at the top. So for example, aspiring SOC analyst, building seam and incident report skill. Then I want you to add a short skills list that matches your target role. So think tools like Splunk, Wireshark, NIST frameworks, or TCP IP. Then list two to three short projects with impact. Now, an example of this could be built a three VM home lab and analyzed network traffic with Wireshark. Another one, completed 20 plus try hack me labs and documented findings in a simple report. You could put mapped a fictional company to NIST, CSF, and created a mini risk register. These are the things that make a recruiter stop scrolling and think, okay, this person gets it. Because you've got tangible evidence clear on your resume of what you've done and what the outcomes were. Okay, moving on. Step five, optimizing your LinkedIn LinkedIn profile. Now I've talked about this many times before, but LinkedIn is essentially your digital resume. Your headline should clearly state your path. So something like, again, aspiring SOC analyst or building blue team skills, sharing my learning journey. Your about section, keep it human. Three short sentences, who you are, what you're building and what kind of roles you're looking for. That way as a recruiter, when I look at it, I can see straight away, this is who you are. This is what you want. I want to contact this person and discuss further. Now add your best work to the featured section. So your lab summaries, your portfolio links or your certifications and then post updates about your progress a few times a week it doesn't have to be fancy just consistent recruiters and hiring managers like me notice people who are active who are curious who are sharing and always learning it shows motivation not just an interest and that's really important okay moving on to step six networking without being awkward so what do i mean by that well networking doesn't mean spamming messages asking for jobs instead message people for insight not opportunity so for example hey sarah i'm building towards a soccer analyst role and just completed a fishing triage lab if you were me would you what would you focus on next that's genuine isn't it it's an a message out to someone asking them advice on something you've just completed and if you think about it, it's clever because you're almost introducing yourself to someone that you want to speak to you're not asking them that you're looking for a job you're not spamming them you're asking them a very thoughtful question and that really helps you that's how real conversations start now go to local security meetups and um, look online there's plenty on reddit on X, on all these different forums, LinkedIn, where you can join spaces and you can chat and communicate with fellow like-minded people and share your experience. And when you meet someone new, don't ask for anything. Just ask questions and share what you're learning. People remember that. Okay, moving on to step seven, apply strategically. And here's a big one. You don't need to apply for 200 jobs. You need to reply strategically. Focus on entry-level roles, SOC analyst, junior analyst, trainee, IT security support, help desk. Look at managed service providers. They are a great starting point. They often hire people who are still building their skills. Apply for 10 roles a week, but tailor each one. I can't stress that enough. Use keywords from the job description in your resume and follow up after a week with a short message. Something like, hi, I applied for the junior analyst role. My portfolio includes a seam lab report that I'd be really happy to walk you through. Polite, persistent stands out. Okay, next up, step eight. Now the interview. So this is the fun part. This is when your resume has landed you an interview. This is your chance to sell. So when you finally land that interview, focus on clarity and process. You don't need to know every answer, okay? But you do need to show how you think. So if you get a question you don't know, one way of answering that would be, I'm not 100% sure, but here's how I'd approach it. I'd check logs, I'd identify patterns, I'd test a hypothesis and document finding. Now that shows structure and recruiters love that. Also have a 60 second story ready. Who you are, your lane, your best project and why you're excited about the role. Prepare for that before you go in. Make sure it's in your mind and you've got it there when you need it. And always close by saying, if I joined, here's what I'd focus on in my first month. That's confidence without arrogance. Okay, step nine, keep your momentum. So breaking into cybersecurity takes time, but momentum builds fast once you start. Here's a quick 30 day plan you can follow. Week one, pick your lane, set up your home labs. Week two, complete one project and share it online. Three, apply for 10 targeted roles and connect with 10 professionals. And week four, complete a second project and practice interviews. That's progress recruiters can see and it compounds over time. So to recap, the five-step roadmap gave you the sequence. The free courses video gave you the tools. The entry-level roles video gave you the direction. And this video gives you the recruiter plan to actually get hired. I hope this really helped you. If it did, hit that like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments which cybersecurity path you're aiming for this year. Also, I wanna know if there's any other videos that you guys want me to make on this topic around cybersecurity, around career advice, let me know. I'd be happy to look into it. And if you want personalized help from resume feedback to interview prep, check out my one-to-one -one coaching link in the description. Thanks for watching. As always, keep leveling up your career. I'll see you on the next one.